All right, it's 1030. This is the detention docket for the 323rd District Court for Monday, January 25th, 2020. In compliance with the Texas Supreme Court Emergency Order Number 33, we are not conducting in-person proceedings. However, we're conducting these online via Zoom. I'd like to remind everyone, and oh, to comply with the Texas Open Courts Act, we are uh, broadcasting these proceedings on YouTube. No portion of this broadcast may be recorded, broadcast, or copied. Violations of this order are punishable by contempt of court of up to six months in the Tarrant County Jail and a $500 fine. This is a court proceeding. The court does expect everyone to behave appropriately for court. That means please not be laying down, eating food, uh, smoking cigarettes, uh, walking around, being in a moving vehicle, Please refrain from having bright lights from behind you as that shadows out your face and we are unable to see you. So Ms. Boyd, please do not be talking to other people. You are in court. So uh, I do apologize. I was, I, was uh, I did tell the, uh, my son's probation officer that I had a doctor's appointment today. So I'm at the doctor's and trying to be logged in at the same time. Okay. Uh, that it just, I mean, if you can't be here behaving appropriately for court, then you just have to come to court physically. All right, Sir? we don't make those exceptions. What'd you say? If you cannot, if you cannot behave appropriately on Zoom, if you have another conflict with a doctor's appointment, please go to your doctor's appointment. But moving screens are a distraction to everyone else here. All right, the court okay. does expect everyone to have their cameras on unless you are an officer of the court. So that would mean Adriana, your camera needs to be on. 
Uh, Henry, this is your last warning not to move around with your camera. All right, Ms. Boyd, this is your last warning. You have to stay still. All right, Henry, since you can't keep your face on camera, I'm going to go ahead and remove you. Adriana Barrows or Baron, remove you. My camera's on. Okay, you had another session that was joined in. Yeah, add the JPD officers that are late. All right, so we'll start with Mr. Newton. Thank you, Sheriff, for bringing this inmate. Mr. Newton, I'm Judge Kim. This is a 10-day hearing. I'm deciding whether to keep you in custody or to release you. If I keep you here, you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. We have a parent here for Mr. Newton. No? Okay. I see one, Your Honor. I sent her the link, and um, she said she would be on here. I beg your pardon? No, we don't have a parent. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Smiley. All right, Mr. Newton, currently we're housing you at the Tarrant County Jail. This is, you're currently here with, from June 10th, two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon from June 11th, four counts of burglary of a habitation with intent to commit a felony, and two counts of aggravated robbery. And this is with, this is the one over by TCC with the AR-15 in the trash can. And then you on the video related to this, Mr. Newton. And this is why you're on probation for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, filing level offense. I'm concerned how will release you of the safety of the community, as well as the safety of yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to detain you. Do we have a court setting on this one? We do, Your Honor. This is set for a trial and motions on 416, trial on 419. Okay, great, Mr. Newton. Um, I, I do feel bad that you, you're staying in custody during this whole process, but the level of offense that you're accused of gives me great, great concern, especially with firearms being used with a home invasion, um, as well as attempting to discard a firearm in the public where a child could have access to it. So uh, it's a safety of the community issue for me. That's why I'm detaining you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Newton. Sher Deputy or Sheriff, thank you for bringing this in. May I be excused, Your Honor? Yes, Ms. Perkins, good to see you. Thank you, Your Honor. Good to see you. Okay. Uh, Sheriff, we have one more inmate on the screen. Can you tell me what his name is? Are you Mr. Harris? Yes. Okay, you already signed a waiver, right? Can you repeat that? No, you already waived this hearing through your attorney? Uh, Ms. Lothorpe talked to you and you said you didn't want to have a hearing? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, you know, we've already done the paperwork for you, Mr. Harris. Thank you for being here. Uh, Sh Sheriff, the one with Mr. Harris. Sheriff, are you there? Yeah, we're, we're done with this inmate. Thank you, sir. Is he finished? Yes, he is. We're, we're done with him. Thank you. Okay. okay. Xavier Evans. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Evans, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. When a kid's brought in, you have to see a judge within two days. I decide whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you here, you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. If you can afford one, we'll provide one for you. Ms. Sherman has been appointed as your attorney. Did I see Harmony here? Hi, Judge. Oh, good morning, Harmony. Good morning. Do we have a parent here for Mr. Evans? I gave mom the Zoom link, Your Honor. Okay. I guess they didn't make it. All right, Mr. Evans, let's see, you're 16 years old. Currently, you have a pending case from October of burglary of vehicles and unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. And let's see. You released your mom on electronic mantra on October 14th because you were at level one over three consecutive days. 
November 29th, we issued a warrant for you because you cut off your monitor and evidently you disappeared for two months and your mom called us when you showed up at home and you tested positive for weed. All right, so you missed court. We had court set for you and you missed it because you were on the run. And so I feel like if I was to release you, you would fail to appear for court next time. So I'm gonna go ahead and detain you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Daniel Garcia. Thank you, Honor. May, may I be excused? Thank you, Ms. Sherman. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Garcia, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. Law says when a kid's brought in, you have to see a judge within two days. I have to decide whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days. You do have a right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. We have appointed Mr. Adler as your attorney. Right, Mr. Garcia, let's see. You're 16 years old. You were here back in, no, oh, you've never been here before. All right, so, you know, Saturday police brought you in. They were called to victim's location, met with witnesses who said that your ex-girlfriend, her daughter was the ex-girlfriend of your current girlfriend and that you and the girlfriend arrived at the house along with a third party trying to fight Maria. Fight began between the girls, but was broken up. As Daniel and the two girls were leaving the scene of the vehicle, he pulled out a small gun and shot towards Maria. Several people standing on the porch. One person was struck in the shoulder. Several casings were retrieved by police. So the stepfather pursued Daniel and eventually you crashed out and you were taken to custody. A Glock 19 was covered at a restaurant which the police port said you were trying to hide. So, all right. So Daniel, you and I haven't met before but you have to understand I take instances where with children and guns with the highest level of seriousness, when the children actually use the gun, that gets me even more concerned. So at this point, I'm going to go and detain you and get your behavior to level up. And it gets me to the point where I start considering releasing you or not, but it's going to be well. You're going to have to show me consistent behavior over a period of time that it is safe to release you to the community. All right. Do you have any questions for me, Mr. Garcia? No, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Jordan Gibson. We can stand up. Your Honor, mother is here on Zoom. She's under Lanika's iPad. Okay, thank you. Hello. Hello. All right. So, Jordan, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. When a kid's brought in, you have to see a judge within two days. I have to decide whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You do have a right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. We have appointed Ms. Darcy as your attorney pending this case. I didn't, Ms. Denno, are you here this morning? I don't think I've seen her. So Ms. McGonagall, I'm gonna ask you to step in for Ms. Denno. That's fine, Your Honor. So Jordan, let's see, you have never been here before. On Saturday about 4.30, Mansfield PD responded to domestic. Dispatch said that you have been recently taken by the police to JPS. When the police got there, they said you became upset with her after she attempted to take your phone for not doing chores. They said you grabbed her by the back of the hair, tried to pull her down to the ground, which caused her pain. Mom went to her room, and she could hear you throwing things around the living room. But, it was, excuse me, Your Honor. Yes? Can I say something? Yes. It was not an attempt to throw me to the floor. She, she threw me to the floor caused bodily harm, and we've been through this before, Your Honor. Okay, she so has, what is she, she has what done this before. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, depression. Um, she on medication? They, they, they suggested that I put on medication, and Your Honor, yes, I did not want my child on medication. I thought that we could work this out beyond medication, but it's, it's escalating. She's, uh, so are we she's, to point uh, out we're considering... <laughs> I'm fearful in my own house. Ma'am, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Only one of us can talk at a time. All right. Okay. I have some very direct questions. I need. I just need you to answer the questions. Yes, this sir. is not the time. I'm not deciding what's ultimately going to happen to her. I'm just deciding what happens to her right now. 
Okay. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. So my question for you is, I've are never you been through this. were you considering whether she needs a prescription to help with her mental health issues? Yes. Yes, now is the time now? All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, Jordan, I'm going to refer the psych you to the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist will talk to you and decide whether you have a diagnosable condition, which medication will help. If so, then you'll be prescribed medication. And if Ms. Gibson, if if the doctor finds that there's a that you have a diagnosable condition that requires medication, then the doctor will prescribe that to you. If you refuse to take your medication, you will never get to level one outstanding. If you don't get to level one outstanding, you don't get out of here. Well, you'll just end up going from here to a placement facility. All right, Jordan said so this is your opportunity uh, to start doing what you need to do uh, to find your way out of here. All right, do you have any questions for me, Chips? Jordan? Jordan, do you want to answer me? Jordan, just, I mean, you don't have to talk, but can you just not acknowledge that you can at least hear me? Okay. All right. Thank you, Jordan. Shantasia Jones. Your Honor. I do have mom here, and then I also have a CPS worker on the line. Um, what, do you, uh, what do you mean on the line? I'm sorry, on Zoom. On Zoom, okay. And I want to say it's Miss Adriana Barron. Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. Hello, Miss Barron. Hello, Judge. Where Where are you out of, Miss Barron? Tarrant County Lake okay. Worth office. Okay. Thank you. All right, Ms. Jones, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. I'm deciding when a kid's brought in, you have to see a judge within two days. I have to decide whether to keep you here, release you if I keep you. You have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. Ms. Barron, I'm going to ask, since the department is here, what is her current status with the department? Um, I just received the case an hour ago. Um, we believe that there may be a possibility of refusal of parental responsibility. So uh, I have not had a chance to speak with mom or uh, Shantasia yet. Okay. There is no parent here, correct? No, there is. Mom is here. Um, when we called her initially, she did not want to, um, she refused custody. And so we had to make a CPS report. Okay. I understand. All right, Ms. Jones, let's see, you're 15 years old. On Saturday, about 9 o'clock at night, Fort Worth PD responded to a disturbance. The employee said that you would not identify yourself after getting your hair done. <clears throat> Use a debit card, which only covered 13 out of $266. So you would not give your mom's name or number to everyone. You have possession of four debit cards with all different names on them. and one with your name. So they use that with the date of birth to identify you. So you were charged with theft of services and listed as a runaway. And you may have credit card theft cases coming. You've been a runaway since December of 2020. Mom thinks it's better if you're released to dad. All right, so mom, where is dad? Where does he live? He lives in Fort Worth. Um, okay, I spoke, here. I'm just wondering where, like what county he lives in. Oh, he's in Tarrant County. Okay. So she's been a runaway for over a month. Uh, you know where she's been? I just found out um, yesterday morning um, that she was at a friend's house for the past two and a half, almost three weeks. Okay. Before then, I had no idea. Okay. Friend girl or friend boy? It's a girl. It's a girl. 
Did her parents not realize somebody was living in their house for three weeks? No, this was actually an adult. <coughs> oh. All right. Well. Because I was actually notified last week that um, she was supposed to be dropped off at my niece's house, which called the police. Eulis police picked her up. They took her to a girl's home on Wichita, which that adult went and picked her up from there. I wasn't notified by the police or anyone that she that the police had her, nor that she went to the girl's home, right. nor did the girl's home reach out to me to let me know she was there or that she had been picked up. I had no like, knowledge of nothing until yesterday morning. Did you call her in as a runaway? Yes, she was reported as a runaway December 25th. Wow. And so the police had actually picked her up and never brought her back to you, even though she's listed as a runaway? No. They took her to a girl's home, and I found out, when I found out yesterday, the lady's house that she was at, I had her sister to reach out to her to give me her phone number, and I called her, and she said, she told me, she picked her up from the girl's home, and I informed her, I was like, do you not know that, like, that's, you're not supposed to do that, you're not legal guardian, what right. made you not even notify me? Right. And she was like, I didn't think about that, but. Sure, that's very disappointing. Well, mom, that's really outside the purvey of what I'm doing here. It's mm -hmm. just about detention. Um, Ms. Paxton, have we, I'm sorry, Ms. Rojas, have we done any kind of screening for trauma or anything like that? No. Okay. I think probably this is the kind of case we want to get Ms. Marino involved and just see if we can uh, figure out if there's any kind of, you know, victimization going on in the last month. All right, so, all right, well, I'll tell you what, Ms. Jones, I'm just gonna tap the brakes a little bit. I think there's a bigger problem here. And so I'm gonna go and detain you. And I just wanna settle down and figure out what's going on in your life and see if there's deeper underlying issues. If you need to behave and get your level to level one outstanding, so we can go forward from here and release you. If you can't get to level one outstanding, then you're just going to stay here until you do. All right. Mom, I just hope you understand. We're just going to go through some process, some assessments, and figure out where she's at. Um, Ms. Rojas, let's also get a psychological evaluation. Okay. And, Your Honor, I did notice that they did they did complete the CSAT, and there was no concern. No concern? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, Mom, I guess the bigger question Ms. Barron is curious about is uh, when it's time to release – your daughter, are you refusing to take her or uh, are you willing to take her? If I mean, I'm, I'm not necessarily refusing to take her, but this is not her first time being listed. You don't mind me. if I can finish my sentence. Oh, if, I'm sorry. If you're willing to take her, but under, with the understanding that both mom and me, the court, we're going to be working together to kind of put your daughter in the right direction. Um, no and yes. And my reason for saying that is because I've went through this. This is not her first time being listed as a runaway. My concern is if she's released back to me, she's going to run away again. How long has she run away for before? The same amount of time. About a month at a time. Mm -hmm. But how many times has this happened? Um, this is a total of twice with me, twice with her grandparents. So four. Okay. So four times. All right. Um, well, you know, there's kind of a process that we go through. Um, some kids, when the parents and the court work together, we achieve miracles. Sometimes, no matter what we do, there's just nothing we can do to help the kid. All right. So what I like to do is just kind of go through a process and see if we can make it work. If so, that's great. If we can't, then, you know, there's, there's different options that we have. But my idea is I always try and trust the parents as much as I can, mm -hmm. unless the parents fail to do their job, which I'm not thinking that you're one of those parents, Mom. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm just letting you know, that's kind of where I want to, I would like to go with this, but I can't do this by myself. I really need your cooperation. And based on your history with your daughter, it seems like you're having trouble doing this by yourself. Not necessarily it's your fault. She's just refusing to do what she's supposed to do. So this is sometimes where the court gets involved and we can achieve miracles with children. Okay. okay. All right. So we'll give it a shot, but right now I'm going to go and detain her. Uh, I want her to prove to me that she can get to level one outstanding and follow the rules. That way, I know that if I was ever to release her back to you, mom, that sh she is able to follow your rules. If she doesn't, then it's just her choice. Okay, some kids just aren't able to. All right. Okay. Okay. So, do you 
And so Ms. Barron is here from CPS. I just want to see if she can write in her notes uh, whether you're refusing to accept responsibility or you're willing to give it a shot with the court. I'm willing to give it a shot. Okay. All right, Ms. Barron, is that good enough for you? Yes, it is. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to try. Of course, we may call you if, if uh, this young lady refuses to do what she's supposed to do, but we're going to try now without the department involvement. Okay, I do understand. All right, thank you. Mom, thank you very much. Just, I'm going to make mistakes. I'm not right all the time, but there's just kind of a process that we go through that a lot of times it really works out. It really starts with her behaving here. And if she does, then we give her a little bit more freedom, but she'll be released like an electronic monitor. She has to follow your rules, but it also involves your candor, like you calling Ms. Rojas and letting her know that your daughter has an attitude or she's walking out or things like that. And it, a lot of times it takes a series of her coming back and forth from Kimbo. Uh, but eventually all we want is a daughter to do her job, not to be perfect, but just do what she's supposed to do. Okay. Yes. But it's, if, if I can say, it's not that I have uh, attitude problems or anything like that at home because I don't like she's, she's silent about everything. She waits until I go to sleep and then she leaves. Mm -hmm. She never does anything around me. She'll just leave. And she goes like, like I told the CPS worker last night when they called, I just got released from a CPS case pretty much doing the same thing. We did counseling. We have did all of this. She's been to therapy. She did psychiatric evaluation. She's done all of that. So mom, part of this is when she's sneaking out, it's kind of an attitude problem. Not that she's talking back to you, but she doesn't respect your rules, right? Her attitude as far as your rules and your responsibilities as an adult that's not quite right. So right. part of the juvenile justice system uh, really in the rehabilitation process is teaching kids about the rules of the rules and you have to follow them whether you agree with them or not, not just whether you think you're going to get caught or not. Okay. So, well, mom, just let's give it a chance. I need you uh, to help me, but I want to at least try. If not, there's placements that we can send her to that are six to nine months long. A lot of times they're out of state and she'll have to go and kind of just relearn behavior. And that's the last, that's not what I want to do, but it's an option. Right? And she needs to be aware of that. Okay. All right. Thank you, mom. All right. Lewis Parker. Good. Go to the front lobby. Thank you. Yeah. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Parker, good morning. Judge Kim, this is a 10-day hearing, deciding to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you'll see a judge every 10 days. We've been through this before. All right, so first question is, Ms. Thomas, are you here? Yes. Okay, Ms. Thomas, so I see his level behavior, behavior level is one I've seen since January 7th. Why did he drop down? Uh, Your Honor, he dropped down on... Uh... January 1st for near physical altercation with two other youths in, in, on the pod. Okay, did he instigate it or was the other child instigating? They, it does not say, the notes doesn't say. It just says near physical altercation. All right, so it's been about a month. Uh, Lewis, it seems like you're, you're I mean, I, I, I'm watching you. This is the uh, the capital murder over in West Fort Worth. Lewis, you understand that, you know, we're still kind of, we're here because I let you go. Yeah, I'm cut off the, um, caught with a gun. Uh, so, but we've had a couple weekends where things worked out, let you go, spend some time with your dad who uh, has recently come back. And so I'm going to go ahead and encourage that. Is your mom here again too? Is it just your dad? I did not see her, Your Honor. Okay. Supposed to be. Oh, well, she was late to court. So, all right. Well, um, everything seemed to work out okay last time. Uh, Dad, do we want to go ahead and try and get you another day with your son? Yes, sir. If you don't mind. No, you know, I would like, I would really like Lewis to be out on the street or back home, but he just, he really burned me hard the last time. Right, and so that's just why I'm just really, really hesitant. Um, let's go ahead and do that. What day worked for you, Dad? Uh, I'll be starting CDL training Monday, but um, this weekend will be just fine. This weekend, so Saturday? 
Yes, sir. Okay, so we just want to try Saturday from like eight to eight. Uh, what was whatever it was whatever was good for you? Well, I'm I'm trying to expand this a little bit. So is eight a.m. to eight p.m. okay with you? Yes, sir. It is. That gives you pretty much a full day. That gives you breakfast, lunch, and dinner together. Is that? Yes, sir. That's okay. Yes, sir. It is. Okay, let's go ahead and try that. Uh, Lewis, you understand? I'm I'm doing this because you're keeping your behavior level up, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and so I appreciate what you're doing um, and the effort you're taking. And so we'll go ahead this Saturday, eight eight. But you know, if, if if your level drops, I can cancel it, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Okay, it's up to you to keep it at level and outstanding. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you. Thanks, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Mm -mm. Lionel Taylor. You are All right, Mr. Taylor, you. I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. <clears throat> Law says when kids brought in, you have to see a judge every 10 days. I have to decide whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you, you have to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, I'll provide one for you. Mr. Gladstone has been appointed your attorney. So, Lionel, you're 14 years old. Let's see, on Saturday, about 9 o'clock, Fort PD responded to domestic. When they got there, they met with your mother, who said she came home and she was informed by her nephew that you had slapped him in the head when you did not get out of the chair that you, Lionel wanted to sit in fast enough. When she confronted you, you pushed her and slapped her, but did not cause pain. One officer was speaking with you outside. You said that you went back inside. You would kill your mom, so he arrested you for terroristic threat. So, let's see, back on January 6th, Fourth PD sent a report saying that on January 3rd, they were dispatched to a domestic. Mom said that while she and her husband were out of town, you went to mom's room, broke the closed chest, and took the key to her vehicle. And that January 5th, you were picked up in Arkansas for wrecking her vehicle. Do we have a, yeah, we have a parent. Mom, he's just out of control, isn't he? Yes, he is. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and detain him. We're gonna see what his behavior level's like. I'm gonna decide whether he's safe to release because it seems like he's a danger to both the community as well as himself. All right, mom, so we're gonna review this at 10 days and decide based on his behavior level whether I should release him or continue to keep him here. Okay? All righty. Thank you, mom. Thank you. Kylon Tennyson. I want to keep the release. I would really like. All right, Mr. Tennyson, are you here? All right, I'm Judge Kim. This is a 10 day detention hearing. I'm deciding whether to keep you in custody or release you. If I keep you here, you need to see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. If you're not a foreign attorney, I'll provide one for you. <clears throat> Mr. Graham is your appointed attorney. I think you saw Mr. Graham earlier. I'm here, Your Honor. Oh, good morning, Mr. Graham. Good morning. All right, so, Mr. Thompson. You're 15 years old. <clears throat> you were you had a previous case in June of 19 for evading arrest, stealing a car, which you had deferred, you received deferred prosecution for. And then now on Sunday, <clears throat> Fort Worth PD brought you in. You're saying Saturday night, just before midnight, they saw five juvenile males get out of a Chevy Tahoe and run to convenience store. A moment later, police saw the Tahoe quickly exit the parking lot and speed away. The traffic stop, and there were three or five males in there. They told officers the other two who exited the vehicle at the convenience store had a gun and tried to rob them. Officers went to the convenience store, but the suspects were not found. Went to a couple apartments. And then when they were walking around, they saw two males that they saw earlier exiting the Tahoe. One took off running, the other walked towards some bushes near the building. When they approached you, saw you make a tossing motion, heard the sound of something metallic in the building. They detained you, found a handgun in the grass next to the building. And you're positive for weed. 
All right, well, <clears throat> Mr. Thompson, I don't know if you remember from previous conversations or not, but I take instances. I don't, have we met before? No, sir, I never met you before. Right, all right. Well, unfortunately, the, the first time is under these circumstances. I just have my own kind of compass that says whenever kids are caught with guns, I always detain them at the beginning until mm -hmm. I can decide whether it's safe to release them to the community or not. That's just my policy. If, kids, if weapons are actually used in crimes, <clears throat> actually discharged or pointed at people, then the process to get out is a lot slower. But at this point, I want to make sure it's safe for the community to release you. I, I'm a big fan of guns, <clears throat> but I have a big problem with kids with guns. Mom, do we know where this handgun came from? No, sir. Okay, that's a bigger concern because you know, if you told me, well, that's my gun and he took it and I'm just now I'm worried because it looks like he has access to guns from the street. So we need uh -huh. to be extra cautious. I do not want your son to end up being shot because he's flashing a gun somewhere. Okay. So, Mr. Thompson, I'm sorry you raise your hand. If you have a question for me, uh, I don't mind you asking. I think your attorney's okay with you asking. If you want to tell me something, I'm pretty sure your attorney does not want you to say anything. So a question means it starts with who, what, when, where, hi, wow, how, okay? So do you have a question for me or do you want to tell me something? No, I got a question. Um, I don't understand who was trying to rob them because it wasn't me. Okay, so uh, with that, this is not about your trial. This is simply about re releasing you or keeping you here. What it turns out evidently is the guys you're riding with threw you under the bus. <clears throat> your buddies aren't really your buddies, all right? So they were escaping the police and they tried to get, they were trying to get away from the police by telling them the other two friends, you and the other guy on foot, uh, were robbing the store. That way the police would leave them alone. So they threw you under the bus uh, and hung you out to dry. So hopefully that's kind of indication to you who you who your real friends are. Okay? So that's what happened. There was no actual robbery, but the people in the Tahoe said that you and your buddy were trying to rob the convenience store and that way it would get the police off their backs. Okay? So, Mom, you have a puzzled look on your face. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, it's just cause that's I mean that that ain't that ain't him to be doing none of that stuff well, like so the issue is no one's saying that he robbed the store. Uh -huh. What they're saying is he had a gun. That's my issue. Uh -huh. I have a big problem when kids have guns. And I, I understand it. I I, I, tr I truly understand it. All right. So I'm detaining him just so we can tap the brakes a little bit, figure out what's going on, make sure you know he can behave, he can be respectful, he can follow the rules. And that way it lets me know uh, that it's, it may be a good idea to release him to you. But for right now, I'm going to detain him. For how long? Well, he'll have a hearing in 10 days and then we'll figure out from there. But at this mm -hmm. point, I am just very cautious when a kid's caught with a gun of releasing him. Kids absolutely should not have guns in Tarrant County. And that's, I'm, I'm doing my part to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay? Yes, sir. I understand. Okay. I'm sorry you're going through this, mom. You sound, you look surprised about your son making these decisions allegedly, but I just want to make sure you understand and Ms. your son understands why I'm making this decision. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. All right, well, you. Mom, if you go to the front. Yeah. All right, Mr. Wilson, I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. When a kid's brought in, you see a judge every 10 days. Oh, I'm sorry, you see a judge within two days. I decide whether to keep you or release you. If I keep you here, you'll see a judge every 10 days while you're here. You have the right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. Ms. Hamrick is your attorney. Good morning, morning. Pastor. Good morning, Ms. Hamrick. All right, so he is currently on probation for aggravated robbery. Is this the one with the uh, aggravated robbery over the Winco? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So he was just placed on probation on Miss Washington. When was he placed on probation? June the 24th of last year. Okay. So he's been on probation for about six months. And how has his supervision been? Um, he's been making contact with me weekly. He was just recently assigned to my case on the 4th of this month. He comes from Northwest Unit. But he's been making his contacts with me. He is working. Mom has been making her contacts with me. Okay. What's the last time we gave him a UA? He had a UA when he was brought in and he's negative. No, while on supervision. Have we not given him another UA? Uh, 
I don't have that information, Your Honor, but I can get it to you. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. All right, so, man. Yesterday, police brought you in about one o'clock in the morning. They were dispatched for a domestic call. When they got there, they saw a car idling in the driveway. Police knocked on the door, made contact with you, talked to your girlfriend who had been living with you, and y'all share a bedroom with your son. She said you and her got into an argument over a car that you purchased. She said during the argument, you punched her several times with the fist and drug her out of the bedroom bedroom into the living room, then pulled out a handgun from your pocket and threatened to shoot her, made threats to shoot her family. It was broken up when she went to retrieve her son who was crying in the bedroom. And she said she was holding her son when you began to argue with her again and started punching her, I guess, while she's holding your son. And witness confirmed this. And so the girlfriend said that when she and you heard the officers on the door, you told her when they leave, I'm going to fucking kill you, bitch. To the mother of your child. All right, so you're arrested, brought here to Kimbo. And there was a search of the bedroom vehicle. And when they did the search, they found a nine millimeter handgun beneath the driver's seat. And the box to the gun and a pistol magazine was found in your bedroom. And you're documented as a gang member. And you're on probation for aggravated robbery. All right, well, Mr. Wilson, tell you what, you know how I feel about uh, kids with weapons. I remember the the hearing where we did, I placed you on probation. Your mom was absolutely insisting there's no way you had a gun. You don't have guns. You don't play with guns. And there was no way a gun was involved in that robbery, which you got probation for. Mm -hmm. And it looks like your mom was wrong. So Mr. Wilson. The girlfriend out there right now. If you have a question for me, I don't mind answering your question. If you want to tell Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, Your Honor. None of it ever can happened. Can I finish my sentence? Do you mind? Yes. All right. So I'm saying if you have a question for me, I don't mind answering your, your question. If you want to tell me something, I am certain your attorney does not want you to tell me anything. This is not about, this is not your trial. This is about whether I release you or not. So when I say a question, a question needs to start with who, what, when, where, how. Okay. So do you have a question for me? Yes, sir. Okay. What's your question? Can I at least go to work? Can I at least be on the ankle monitor? Because I, I, this is not true, Your Honor. I okay. need to go to work. May not be true, but whenever there's an allegation, a credible allegation of a child having a gun, then I always tap the brake, tap the brakes. You know that. You've been here before. You've talked to other kids here before. Right? So I gotta get fired. So I'm get fired today. I don't know if you're gonna get fired or not. That's up to your employer. Right. So this is this is what it boils down to is that um, I just I'm not comfortable when kids have weapons. And the fact that you're on probation and there's a weapon in your car and a box to a weapon in your room, as well as a magazine, ammunition. Um, it, it may not have happened what they said, but you are definitely made choices that put yourself in a situation that jeopardizes everything. All right. So I'm going to go and detain you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. She is at, right, the right point, you the the over, at this point, I can turn the docket over to Judge Porter and then I'll return for a couple under points. Not gonna touch the Thank you. I'll give you that information. I told you. <laughs> yeah. All right, Daniel Dalton McCoy. Hello, Mr. McCoy. Hello, Dr. Porter. Oh, uh, does he have a parent or guardian here, Mr. Gladstone? I don't, uh, I can't see him from my uh, my vantage point. Mother should be here. I've had yeah, mom mother. should be here, Judge Porter. Okay, hold on just a second, Daniel. Yes, Daniel, sir. the law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you have to see a judge every 10 business days. So this is your 10-day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney. And your attorney, Mr. Gladstone, is here. We're just waiting for your parent to get in here. All right. Hi, Mom. Let's get you unmuted, Mom. 
There we go. All right. Uh, Daniel, um, I'm familiar with your case. You were previously placed on probation and you were brought in most recently, allegedly for assaulting your cousin. So um, it, that is mom in the family room. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, he's been level 1 for the last seven or so days. Um, has he been taking his medication back in detention? No, we need to change them all because we're moving back to Texas. Okay. Uh, are y'all moving back to Tarrant County? Yes. Okay. Uh, and, and Judge, we want to add that the victim is out of the house. The alleged victim is out of the house. Yes, yes that's that's my understanding. Um, so, Mom, do you want him to come home today? I would like him to come home. Do you feel safe if he's in your house? Yes, I believe he was only defending himself at okay. this point. Um, I don't remember him having a history of running away. He stays with y'all. He like generally does. Yes. Okay. He always comes oh. home. That's that's kind of what I thought. Uh, who's here from the DA's office? He's talking to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe. All right, well, they've had their chance. Um, Mr. Gladstone, I'm gonna authorize his release to mom today. I don't, um, Ms. Huey, I don't, I don't think this is really an appropriate case for an electronic monitor, correct? Correct, Your Honor. I, there, there has not been an issue with, with anything like that, with runaway or drug use or anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think uh, as long as mom feels comfortable and making sure that Daniel stays safe and is compliant at home, I think that's a better situation for him. Daniel, now you've been level 1-0 back in detention. I expect you to be level one at home for your parents, okay? Yes, sir. So um, when you start getting angry or frustrated or something, you need to think about your anger management techniques that you learned, okay? Yes, you sir. That for me? Yes, sir, I will. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. All right. Thank, that'll you. Be over the court. Thank you, Mr. Gladstone. Thank you, Judge. Okay. <coughs> All right. Well, Jordan. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Ferguson, help me correctly pronounce his last name. I struggle every time he comes. And I kind of do too, but I think it's Facilier. Is it? Is it Facilier? Yes, sir. How do you correctly pronounce your last name, sir? Fusilier. Fusilier? Yes, sir. All right. So um, my name is Judge Porter. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 business days thereafter. This is your 10-day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney, and your attorney, Mr. Ferguson, is here. All right. Uh, you were previously referred uh, for an out-of-custody detention hearing. Um, apparently, you'd been arrested by Dallas County for evading arrest in UMV uh, at the beginning of December, shortly before 7 in the morning. Um, the Dallas County police officer told, uh, or excuse me, Dallas County probation officer told our probation officer here that a Dallas County PD officer was trying to pull you over and you accelerated evading arrest or detention. Passed a light and hit another vehicle. Five, of in, five individuals jumped out of the vehicle and ran for the officer and you were seen jumping out of the driver's side, but they got you. Um, then Juvenile County released you uh, later that evening. You have another pending petition from Arlington PD for evading arrest and criminal trespass. And in that offense, they found a small black Ruger magazine. It was dropped by one of the people who fled from that vehicle. 
you and a co-respondent were located in an apartment into which some of the people fled. Suspects made some self-incriminating statements during their Instagram live story. Wow, this just gets better and better. Short time later, a companion was located on the balcony in the same apartment complex. Okay. And so we released you on that back in September, but yet less than two months later, Dallas County reported a similar incident. You're scheduled for court next week and 1.30 in the afternoon, but in your defense, you've been level 10 since, oh, five days ago. So Mr. Ferguson, what are your thoughts? Yes, Judge. Um, so when he was first released, he was on a monitor with living with his mom and he did really well took him off the monitor, went to go live with his, stay with his dad for a while. And that's when he got the new case. Um, I've talked to him several times. I've talked to his mom several times. I think we're all on the same page now. He's been in 40 days. He missed Christmas, New Year's, his birthday. I think it has been a wake up call for him. We were scheduled for court a couple weeks ago to accept probation because this is a misdemeanor case and we were ready to take the probation, but the DA's office ask for continuance because they want him to resolve his Dallas County issues before they deal with his Tarrant County issues. Um, obviously he can't do that if he's in, in detention here. And so we would like him to go home on a monitor. He's going to stay with his mom and she's here. She's on the video. Um, you know, I know that he dipped down just for briefly in detention, but I think it was just for, from 1O to 1A and then right back up. But for the majority of the time he's been in, he's been 1O. Um, and so we would like to get him out so that we can just determine which case are we going forward on? Cause he's got, he has a Tarrant County case uh, court date next week. And this Dallas County case is the same is a couple days later. So I would like to give him a shot, the monitor. He did really well on it the first time. So that's where we would, that's where we stand, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Ferguson. Um, right now, I don't feel comfortable. Five days isn't enough to prove to me that he can maintain level 1 at home. So um, I think, I'm afraid that if I were to release him to today. Judge, if I may. Yes, Judge, may I, say, may I say something? Um, Jordan has been a level one since the 18th of December. And then, yes, he did drop down to a level one acceptable on the 19th. Um, I talked to him about that and he was unclear why that happened. He also spoke to a supervisor. I emailed a supervisor on Friday to get clarification on what happened and I haven't gotten a response back on that. But the majority of the time he has been a level one outstanding since he's been in detention. You understand though, my concern is less than, it wasn't even 60 days after we released him last time, he committed a new offense allegedly over in Dallas County. And that just gives me a real pause. And one of the two police found evidence of a gun connected with him. That just, that just really scares me. And um, the fact is he didn't even have a driver's license. He wasn't even legal for him to drive at the time. So um, I just don't feel comfortable today. So um, we'll see how next week goes. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Judge. Andrew Handy. I'm covering that, Judge, for Miss for Miss Turner Hale. All right. Thank you, Ms. Guerrero. Are you Mr. Handy? Yes, sir. Mr. Handy, my name is Judge Porter. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 business days thereafter. This is your 10-day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney, and your attorney, Mr. Gladstone, is here. Um, you have been level 1-0 for the last 11 days. That's, that's good. Um, we previously issued a directive to apprehend uh, based on your history of uh, electronic monitor violations. 
Ms. Guerrero, he's currently on probation, is that correct? No, Judge, he's pending court. Oh, I'm sorry, pending court. Okay. When did he, we release him on the electronic monitor last time? Yes, Judge, and I also wanted to tell you his dad was trying to get in. Okay, and what was the date on which we released him on the electronic monitor? I'm getting that information for you, sir. I show that he started the electronic monitor on 12-13. Okay, and then we received no, the curfew I'm sorry. alert. It was June 12, 2020, and then he was brought in on January 7th. And we received the alert about the violation on the 6th. Okay. And this is where his father had asked him to rake the yard. He responded with an inappropriate statement telling the father that the father could rake his own yard. And things escalated after that. All right. Um, Mr. Gladstone, do we have a parent here? That I don't know, Judge. Judge said dad was trying to get in. I don't think he was allowed in through Zoom. Okay. Um, I'll ask the court coordinator to check and see if anybody's in the waiting room. I believe dad is Henry, sir. Uh, yes, we're just waiting on everything to connect. All right. Hello? Yes. Yes, dad. Okay. Um, dad, your son's been level one O, but uh, he was previously pending an offense here and then picked up a new UMV um, about two weeks ago. My concern is if I release him to you, what, what assurances can you make to the court that he's not going to go, go out and commit another crime? Well, I can do my best, sir, and make sure he's at home. But I like to get him on a job because the store has been trying to hire him. But we, this court thing, we've been studying wait and keep counseling it so he can't get a job yet. I was trying to get him on probation to where he can go to work.
he's scheduled for court February 18th. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Judge. Mr. Handy, I'm sorry. I'm just not there yet. Um, 11 days at level 10 is a long time, but something tells me, my gut's telling me no, because uh, we released you and there was electronic monitor, electronic monitor violation and you pick up a new offense. Um, I'm just not convinced yet that if I were to release you, you wouldn't pick up another new offense. Now your dad's made some really good points that he wants you to get out there. He wants you to get a job and a job. Will, it's, it's a great thing to teach you discipline. But I'm, I don't know, something in the back of my head is just telling me to, to put pause this a little bit longer. So I'm not there yet. There's a good chance though, the next time I may be there, Mr. Handy, okay? Or okay. I'm just not there. I'm just not there yet. I'm sorry. All Thank right. you, Judge. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you, Judge. Bye bye. Okay. What, two more weeks? All right. Are you Ms. Smith? Yes. Ms. Smith, my name is Judge Porter. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 business there, days thereafter this year, 10 day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney, and your attorney, Ms. Johnson, is here. Do you see her? Yeah. Okay. Um, you were pre previously referred for an assault, an alleged assault. Um, so I'm not going to go into the details of that. Ms. Smith, you're level three confined in the back. Um, so, Ms. Johnson, what are your thoughts? Judge, um, I've spoken with the mother and I've spoken with my client. Um, Ms. Moore, who was the mother, indicated that there were some uh, medication issues that she was trying to get resolved. Um, it is my understanding that phone calls have been made to try to resolve that issue. And I'm not sure whether the follow through has happened from the MHMR uh, pharmacy. I, I, I just don't know the answer right this second, um, but I think that will go a long way in fixing the problem. The mom has also indicated to the probation officer that she's not really interested in pursuing all of this. So just to be, make sure the court is aware. Ms. Washington, do you know anything about the meds? Um, yes, Your Honor. She was waiting for the pharmacy to, I mean, to pick a medication up from the pharmacy. I actually had submitted a um, mental health assessment or referral for the doctor, the psychiatrist to see her. He was actually supposed to see her on last week, but I just got an email from Dr. Machaka stating that he's supposed to see her, I believe, on the 27th in a couple of days. So right now the medication is still pending. Okay, so that's Wednesday. And she does have a psychological evaluation that's scheduled for the 2nd of February, and that report is due back on the 9th. Mom's supposed to be on Zoom. I do not see mom. No, I don't. Okay. Ms. Johnson, does that answer the bulk of your questions about everything that uh, Ms. Smith needs as far as medication right now? It does. Is there anything else that uh, Ms. Washington or myself can do to help Ms. Smith in that respect? I presume if you can put a fire under MHMR to get the prescription filled, that would help uh, because since she has to then bring it out to the detention center, but she indicated she wanted Solange, Solange home, so. Okay. <clears throat> Ms. Washington, if uh, Mr. Manchara, uh, Dr. Manchara prescribes medicine, Will JPD be able to fill that and provide it to Ms. Smith while she's here? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. 
So one way or another, we may be able to provide Ms. Smith with medicine Wednesday, possibly Thursday, right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Then, um, if Ms. Washington, if you will keep in contact with MHMR and the mom and see if they can get their process started faster, that way Ms. Smith gets help sooner, that we can go ahead and have Dr. Machaca double check all that work and look at everything and, um, and provide an extra level of support, belt and suspenders, all right? Yes, Your Honor, I will. Will that work, Ms. Uh, Johnson? It does. All right. Now, Ms. Smith, as for today, I have to go ahead and detain you because you're level three confined, but you're going to see the doctor on Wednesday, okay? Yes. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. All right. Davion McKenzie Stevenson. Are you Mr. Stevenson? Yes, sir. Mr. Stevenson, my name is Judge Porter. The law says when you're brought into detention and initially detained, you must see a judge every 10 business days thereafter. This is your 10-day hearing. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to an attorney, and your attorney, Mr. Graham, is here. Now, uh, the court has previously found probable cause exists to believe that you engaged in delinquent conduct sufficient to warrant your initial detention. Um, when you last saw Judge Kim, did he talk to you about the levels in the back? Yes, sir. What's your level supposed to be before I can even begin the discussion of whether or not you should be released? Level one, I stand. What is your level? Two A. Uh-huh. So what do I have to do? Detain. And why do I have to do it? Because of my level. Because you haven't demonstrated you can follow the rules in the back. And until you've demonstrated that you can follow the rules in the back, I can't even begin to think you'll follow the rules if I were to release you, right? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Graham, anything else? Judge, I think he's allergic to having detention hearings because <laughs> he stays on level 1-0 for almost the entire 10-day period. And then for some reason, we get a 1-A notice the morning of the detention hearing. So I would ask the court to at least I don't know, take a good average. He's been up <laughs> 1 0. On, he's been 1 0 more than 98% of the time. He's, I, I think he's just allergic to these video hearings. Well, we do have, we do have kids like that. So, um, all right. Well, as for today, Mr. Stevenson, I'm going to go ahead and order you be detained. Get your level back up where it needs to be. Put yourself in a good position for Mr. Graham to make a good argument for you, okay? Can you do that? All right. Thank you, sir. Thank All right. You. I'm going to turn it back over to Judge Kim. Thank you, Judge Porter. We're not ready for. Oh, I'm sorry. At this point, these are public proceedings so open to the public. However, the Texas Family Code says when a child under 14 years old has court, it is presumed to be closed to public unless the court finds good cause to open the proceedings to the public. Unable to make that finding, we will now discontinue the live stream of these detention hearings and go into the closed proceeding. Please allow 20 seconds for the tape delay. Okay.